On this episode of Live View Mastery, we're going to be setting up GitHub Actions when every time we push to GitHub, it's going to run our test suite and ensure that we don't break anything. And it's effectively for free because GitHub Actions has a very generous free tier and we will be able to push with confidence to GitHub, making sure that all of our code is running and that it's working as intended. So first off, you want to probably spend some time getting familiar with the GitHub documentation for actions. I've actually never read this, but I've had a lot of experience with CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment platforms in the past. So I didn't necessarily need to read it, but if this is your first time doing something like this, getting an overview of GitHub actions, I, I think would be very beneficial to your career. But we're going to set this up and we're going to figure out how GitHub Actions works line by line, character by character, inside of this episode of Live View Mastery. So the very first thing you need to do is you need to create a .github folder and a .workflows folder. So you need to do make directory.github. It already exists on my branch. And then you need to make a workflows folder. And when you do a dot folder, this is a hidden directory in terms of um, at least Unix operating systems. This tells GitHub and nobody else essentially that we want to initiate GitHub actions. And so once we've created these two folders, we need to create an elixir.yaml file. And now we're going to get into it. We're going to give it a name. This could be called CI. This could be called tests. This could be called continuous integration. I just call it CI short for continuous integration. The very next line is this on command. Remember, you can look at the GitHub Actions readme to be able to configure it yourself. But on push means that it's going to run on every single time we push code to GitHub, we want GitHub Actions to run. You can do this where it only runs when you set up a pull request. You can do this when it only runs on the main branch or the master branch. But for me, uh, in my experience, push is, the ex is an excellent configuration for GitHub Actions. And so now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of how to set up GitHub Actions specifically for Elixir, Phoenix, and Phoenix Live View. So we're going to have separate jobs. So what, how GitHub Actions, Actions is actually implemented inside of GitHub's infrastructure is it's going to spin up a virtual machine. And typically for most Phoenix applications, it's going to spin up two virtual machines for you. It's going to spin up a Postgres virtual machine and it's going to spin up your test virtual machine. So when it says runs on Ubuntu latest, that means that the one your Elixir project is going to run on on a virtual machine, which has the latest version of Ubuntu on it. The reason why it's running on Ubuntu is because it's a free operating system and nobody has to pay anybody to be able to use it. Next, we're going to create a another virtual machine for our uh, for Postgres. So Postgres is our database. And when you see Postgres image 14, now this is interesting because the way GitHub's infrastructure works is it's built on Docker. So if you go to Docker Hub and say you need to be on a different version of Postgres, you need to go to whatever database you're using, whether it be MySQL or Postgres, you need to find an officially, an official supported Docker image because if you don't use an official image, you may be running, uh, a virtual machine with code that you don't understand. They may, uh, I don't know, they may have a Bitcoin miner in the code base or something like that. And who knows? You just want to use official images because you want to have, you want to have confidence that the virtual machine that's running is not stealing your code or anything like that. So what you can do is once you find the, the official Postgres image, you can go to the tags and you can find what version of Postgres you want, whether it be 14 bullseye, or 15.1 bullseye. I chose version 14 for this. And so when we look at our code, it knows to go to Docker Hub and go to the profile for Postgres. You can actually see this in your URL, which is after the library and the URL, you, it'll show you the username and the actual name of the image that you're going to be using. So we're using the Postgres 14 image, and we're going to be setting our username, password, and the name of our Postgres database. Yours needs to match what's in your config slash test study access, which configures the username, the password, and the name of your database. 
So you want to make sure that the environment variables, these three environment variables match the username, password, and database inside of your test configuration. Postgres by default runs on port 5432. So these options between 5, 15 and 17 are pretty standard. So just copy and paste this. And then finally, we want to make sure that our tests run in the test environment. So by default, if you deploy without this line, it's going to run into, it's going to run in the development environment. You want to make sure that your tests are running in the test environment. So the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually clone our code base. It, we're going to use this macro or this GitHub action, action slash checkout. So at this point, we can go to github.com slash actions slash checkout. And we can actually see what it does. And what it does is it's cloning our repository into the virtual machine. So you actually don't have to configure this that much where it, by default, it knows that it's going to clone your repository into the virtual machine that it's spinning up in the cloud. And then for our purposes, because we are Elixir and Erlang people, we are going to use this setup beam GitHub action where it's going to install Erlang version 24 and Elixir version 1.13. Now it's going to get kind of interesting because when we actually run our code on GitHub Actions, we can have a cache where our dependencies folder and our compiled beam files are cached. So that way, whenever we push, we're going to have really fast build times. So if we go to my version of GitHub Actions, I have these two steps where I'm initializing a cache for the depths folder. So if we just ls, Every Elixir project ends up with a depths, which is that is the folder that has your dependencies. And this underscore build folder is the folder where your compiled beam files, when your Elixir and Erlang files compile down to the actual Erlang virtual machine, those files live in your build folder. And so what these two lines are doing is caching our assets based off of the mix.lock and uh, well, for the Elixir dependencies, the depths folder. And then for our underscore build folder, it's actually doing it based off of the same thing, based off the mix.lock. So this is an excellent line that's going to speed up your test running times. Make sure that you add this to make sure that whenever you push your code and you haven't changed any of your dependencies or any of your files, it's going to have a reference. It's going to have a cache on their, on GitHub's infrastructure, which is going to make all of your test runs faster. Next, by default, you may not need this, but many of you will, where you need to install Node onto GitHub Actions. Where, so we're gonna uncomment this, where it's going to set up Node. This set up Node GitHub Action will effectively cache the dependencies for your package lock.json. Based on your package lock.json, that's gonna essentially do an imprint on the Install JavaScript dependencies and based off of the state of your package lock.json, whether it's changed or not, that's when it's going to know to be able to update the cache. So we're going to use setup node version 3, node version 16.x. Uh, we're going to name the cache npm. And when I ran this, I had an issue where it did not, I act, the assets package lock.json file was not actually in source control. So what I had to do was I had to do git add assets package lock.json dash force. So if you run into the error where you are pushing and your node cache is saying, hey, I don't know what the name of the cache is or I can't, I can't create a cache, check to see when you go to GitHub, make sure that inside of your assets folder that you actually have a package lock.json. This should only be a problem for people who are starting with new Phoenix projects. Make sure that you have a package lock.json file on GitHub in the UI. If you don't have that, that means you probably need to do a force push of getting of git add assets slash package lock.json. And then finally, because I'm using the Wallaby framework, I needed to set up Chrome driver on GitHub Actions. So there was this is just a one liner for easily setting up Chrome driver and installing it on Ubuntu. And then we're going to just do our standard things that we do when we start up a new project, mix local.rebar, mix local.hex, installing hex grab our dependencies, run npm install, and we're going to run mix test. So those of you that have old projects that are using npm, you're going to need to run this, uh, some sort of line that's going to run your code in production mode. I actually 
through a file inside of the Live View Mastery code base where I have a package example that JSON. So this is in case you need to do some sort of production configuration, like say you're on an old version of Phoenix where you where it was Webpack instead of ES Build. You're going to need a line like this to execute the production build of your JavaScript assets. And then after that, you just run mixed test. And this is the only thing you need to set up GitHub Actions. If you just look at this file, I'm going to give you a nice view of this file so that you can copy the things that you may want or need. Typically, if you're starting from new, you're not going to need these things. But uh, we're also Chrome driver, you're probably not going to need these things. But if you set up the rest of these things, making sure that your environment variables variables for Postgres are lined up with your project, you will be able to get GitHub Actions running and you will be able to run your test and make sure that on every push, your code is in a good state. And so this is me running the test week for the first time for the LabVIEW Mastery repo. And now because it's inside of the code base, inside of this .github workflows slash elixir.yaml file, my test will always run whenever I push. And that's how you set up GitHub Actions for an Elixir project.